Hi everyone. Um, said I was going to do a few videos to kind of refresh those people who came to the Broward Minecraft education training. So in this video, uh, and probably the request I get the most, uh, I'm going to be sharing classroom mode for Minecraft. Uh, it's one of the great tools that Minecraft education offers for managing uh, your classroom while using a shared world with your students in Minecraft education. Uh, we're going to be doing a whole series of videos. This is actually just the first. Uh, and in this one, we're going to cover that classroom mode software. I'm going to show you where to install it. I'm going to show you how to get it running and connected to your game mode. And of course, some user tips and tricks within that software. So we're going to get started. So assuming that you already have Minecraft Education Edition installed from the Software Center here in Broward, uh, I've gone ahead and loaded up that software you can see right here. I've got Minecraft Education Edition uh, up and running. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start a world. There we go. It's giving me a hard time there for a second. So I'm going to go into View My Worlds, and I'm going to just load one of the activities I've been doing with classes, uh, both teachers and students. Um, and it's a Broward name garden. It's basically a social emotional uh, activity that allows students to build their name in here while teaching them the mechanics of the game and giving you the teacher an opportunity to kind of figure out all of those things to help you get started. Uh, it's just kind of a starter world. If you want a copy of this world, uh, I'd be happy to post it uh, and I'll create a link for that as well and feel free to use it. So I'll be happy to share it. Uh, but basically the gist, as I said, is the students would spawn in this world, and you can see there's this big open space, right, and our big Broward STEM logo. And they would start, though, way down this end, uh, because one of the strategies we learned if you came to the training is to guide students with things like signs and non-player characters. Uh, so here's a sign, for example non-player characters. We can store items in chests for them, uh, but those non-player characters can be uh, created to give students instructions. So this is reminding them to read the instructions ahead uh, and to go into their inventory and grab the materials they need. And of course, reminding them that they're being watched because that was the point of this activity was for me to show you how classroom mode works. And so how you can keep an eye on what your students are doing while they're in a shared Minecraft world. And of course, over here is the billboard with the directions. And again, their job is simply to go out into the space and build their name uh, in the garden using any blocks they like and kind of make the garden a pretty place filled with their names. Um, now, keep in mind that classroom mode is specifically designed for shared worlds. If students are working in activities like these in independent worlds, classroom mode is not going to manage those individual spaces. Uh, so you'd have to use something like land school to view what all the students are doing on their monitors or to enable or disable what the students are doing. Classroom mode specifically manages your shared world. So to do that, of course, we're going to host a world. So I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard and pull up that menu like we always do, which gives us our how to play settings and save and exit options. But you'll notice there's a tab at the top over here with a bunch of faces. And one of those buttons says to start hosting. So I'm going to host this world. Now, of course, if anyone is live watching right now and doesn't look like anyone is, uh, they would be able to join this if they were in our Broward Schools network. Um, and the students are going to get a picture code to join in. Uh, in this case, it is Steve, Panda, Fish, and Apple. Um, but at this point, as the teacher, I want to monitor those students who are coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and launch classroom mode. Now, first, I want to show you where to get that. So I'm going to open up a window here. And I've gone to education.minecraft.net. And it brings up the education site for Minecraft. I'm going to click on this big purple button on the left that says Get Started. And the very first thing that comes up at the top is try Minecraft Education Edition with a download now button. Now, this isn't going to take us directly to the install for the software. Plus, we already have it if you're at this point with me. But I'm going to click there anyway and go to that download page. And this is where we download the software if we weren't getting it through Software Center. Now, I still recommend you get it through Software Center. That way, when the district updates, yours will update. So you'll always be on the same version uh, as your students which is a requirement if they're going to join your shared world. So if you are on 1.12.6, they need to be on 1.12.6. If you come here and update yours before theirs, and you're on 1.12.7, and they're still on 0.6, they can't join you until everyone's on the same version. So get it from the Software Center. Don't get it from here. But what you can get from here uh, is 
classroom mode. So if I scroll down just a little bit, you'll notice right under the major downloads, there is this sentence. And this is all it is. So you got to look for it. That says classroom mode is available here for Windows and Mac. So you're going to click on the version uh, for what you have. Now, most of us in Broward have Windows. So I would just click on the word Windows over here by classroom mode. And it would give me the install file, which I could then, of course, uh, run the install and install the software. Now, I already have it, so I'm not going to reinstall it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and close that window. But I am going to run classroom mode. Now, when I first run classroom mode, just like in Minecraft Education Edition, it's going to prompt me to log into uh, the program. Now, keep in mind, this is something that only uh, teachers can access and not students. So their uh, student accounts will not run this software, and they won't be able to manage worlds from it, even if they could. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And of course, it'll prompt me, uh, redirect me to the Broward Schools page, and I will go ahead and put in my password. And I'm logged in. Now, when it first logs in, it's going to say logging into service. There it goes. Uh, and it's going to give me a list of available servers on my network for the game. Now, there aren't any, and there aren't going to be any unless, of course, you've connected this in the past. Now, to add server, and I'm going to click that for a second, I need to name it, and I need to provide the IP address, which is here. Now, I can do that, but there's a much easier way to connect these if you want. Uh, so I am going to click out of there, and instead of clicking in Add Server, I'm going to click in Waiting Room. And Waiting Room is going to simply give me a slash command that I can use in my shared Minecraft world. By clicking this button over here, I'm copying that command. So once again, I'm going to click that button, and I'm going to copy that slash command. I'm going to come back to my Minecraft game. I'm going to resume my game. I'm going to press T on my keyboard to bring up the chat bar. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste that command right in there, and then come over here and send it. And instantly, it has established a connection using the IP and the port. I didn't have to know those at all, uh, and has connected the software. You'll notice the software in the background there uh, in my classroom mode has changed. I'm going to pull that right over here so we can see it better. So I'm in classroom mode right now, and I'm going to notice that when I zoom out, I can see the whole map that I've created here where my students would be working. So that whole garden space that I created, everywhere in there is now available. I can get this bird's eye view. Every student will have an icon like this that has like a little point and an arrow showing me which way they're facing and a name telling me who that is. So I can see not only where everyone is, but what they're looking at, what they're doing, which is great for an overview of my classroom. Because if let's say Eric is working here, only person in the room right now is me, uh, and I notice that there's another icon on top that says Timmy, and Timmy raises his hand and says, somebody keeps messing with my stuff. If I look at this map and I see Timmy and Eric are overlapped, I know who it is, and I can immediately deal with that issue, either by reminding uh, Eric or Timmy that they need to separate, or I can do it physically right here in the software. So let me show you some of the features that are in the software. Uh, I'm going to resume game just so my character is kind of live again and uh, switch back to the software. So this game is running live, and this is managing this game. If there were multiple people in this game, I'd see a list of names here of everyone who was in here. So I've got just me in here, so I'm going to mess with me. First thing I can do is I can click these three little lines up here at the top of left a corner of the classroom mode software. And that gives me some quick keys to turn on and off some settings. So for example, the first one, one of my favorites, is I can pause the game for everybody. So if you're like me and you were a classroom teacher and you had a class set of devices and you used to have to do those things where it was like, okay, close your laptops, or I need everyone's eyes up front, it was impossible. Click of a button, pauses the game for everyone. They all get a pause screen. They can't do anything until you unpause the game and the game goes live again for everybody. Uh, we can turn off chat all together or turn or turn on chat and turn off chat all together, which means if I don't want my students using the chat bar and sending each other their messages, I can shut that down. I can turn the weather on and off. So if I need a nice clear screen to work on without rain and thunderstorms or snow, I can keep that on keep perfect weather all the time in my world so that my students can work in an environment without that issue. I can turn the mobs, which are your animals and creatures, on and off, uh, destructive devices on and off, player damage on and off, player versus player is the thing here at the bottom with the two swords that are crossed on and off. 
And this pickaxe over here, one of my favorites, is the Immutable World. What Immutable World will do is if I turn it on, it'll stop students from building or destroying even if their game is still live. So if I want to show them something in the game or show them what another student is creating, I can do that without them being able to mess it up. And then, of course, when they go back to where they're working, I can turn that off and they can get back to work. But my favorite feature uh, is this. So I can see Eric S. is right here in the map. And of course, on the game, we can see my character is standing there looking at that sign, which is right there on the map. But let's say I wanted Eric working over here in the top left corner because he's just blocking this pathway. And I keep saying, Eric, you need to move yourself so the other players can get through and get started. He's not moving. I can come over here to his name. Now, again, I'm not going to click on his uh, icon. I'm going to click on his name and drag that name over there to the top left. And boom, you'll notice it teleported Eric to a new place. Eric is now up here. You saw that in the game, I'm no longer standing by the sign, but I'm way over there in that top left corner. And I can put my students wherever I want them. I can drag each student over onto the map exactly where I want them to get working. And I can keep an eye on them from an aerial view to make sure they are where they're supposed to be. So that's really, really helpful. In addition, if I need them to all go see something, maybe I want them all looking at this bumblebee, every student, I can right click on the map and teleport everyone to the same place. So I can move my whole class together if I need to. Bring them all back together into one group looking at one thing. So that's really helpful as well. I can also right click on him and mute him if he's being rude in the chat. Uh, and then of course, turn that on, back off. You'll notice on the screen, it told me that my mute ability has been granted and then of course uh, has been revoked. Uh, so you can tell, the students can tell when you're doing that and taking away those rights. Also, I can send messages to my students. Now, if I was just using the chat command in the game itself over here, oh, let me find my mouse over here, uh, it would be a problem because they would see my name. Now, again, most of my students knew my name and it's not the end of the world, but for a lot of us, we wanna make sure we're still in that position of authority with our classroom so that they're following directions. If I use the chat bar at the bottom of classroom mode, and let's say I wanna tell my class they have uh, five more minutes, there it says five more minutes and I send that, now you'll see it doesn't come from Eric S, it comes from teacher. So the teacher is now telling the entire class they've got five more minutes to work. And you could send that in a message. So instead of screaming and trying to get their attention uh, or pausing their game while they're working, you can put it right on their screen. Uh, so that's basically classroom mode. Uh, it's a really helpful tool. Now, I will say that Minecraft Education is no longer supporting it because they're tr really trying to encourage people and users to use those slash commands, command blocks and things like that to manage their rooms uh, inside the game itself. But for those of us who are just getting started and for those of us who want to keep a uh, bird's eye view on the class and have some quick clicks that we can do to manage what's going on in our classroom, it is still a really, really great tool. It still works uh, and they still host it on their site for anyone to use. So that is classroom mode. If you have any questions, of course, please feel free to email me. Uh, most of you have my email if you are watching this uh, or uh, reach out to me on Twitter at, uh, at Professor underscore Eric with a K. Uh, and you'll find me there. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.